This is the 9th November 1998, and I'm standing outside the synagogue of the Middlesbrough Hebrew Congregation. You'll notice that on the outside, high up on the wall, there is the symbol which we call the Star of David, or the Shield of David. Although, in fact, there doesn't seem to be any historical connection with King David at all. Just over the doorway, there is an inscription in Hebrew writing, which starts off, Ma Tauvu Awalecho, How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob. This is a phrase which occurs at the beginning of every service we have in the synagogue. And it goes back to the days when Balak, who was rather a wicked king, instructed Balaam, his henchmen, to curse the children of Israel. Balaam looked at the children of Israel and their encampment because, of course, they were in tents. And he decided that they were really quite decent and well-behaved people bringing up their children properly. So he didn't curse them, and what he finally said was, How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob! Jacob being in those days a synonym for Israel. This candelabra is called a Hanukkah, and it reminds us of events 2,000 years ago. The Syrian Greeks had desecrated the temple, that is the great synagogue in Jerusalem, and the Maccabees, that's a group part of the children of Israel, had uh, reconquered the Syrian groups, and they wished to reconsecrate the temple. They wanted to light the flame, but they found they only had enough oil for one day. They sent off for more oil, and they prayed and hoped that the oil they had would last. And miracle of miracles, it lasted eight days. And we commemorate that occasion. We light the, the working candle, and then the first night we write one candle, the second night two candles, the third night three candles, and so on. And the festival is now called Hanukkah, which is rededication. In English we talk about the Festival of Lights. There are nine stained glass windows here which were brought from the old synagogue in Brentnall Street. Two of them are um, memorials to my grandfather who died in 1909. Brentnall Street Synagogue was opened in 1874, and my grandparents were the first couple to be married there in 1877. The synagogue moved here in 1938, and the stained glass windows were brought here, and I shall show you two other windows that were also brought here at the same time. This gives you a general idea of the synagogue from the upstairs gallery. You see, first of all, some red windows high up. These were also brought from the old synagogue in 1938, and they show the first words of each of the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments were a great step forward, as was the idea of monotheism and the idea of the Sabbath, and the idea of man having a relationship with God. Looking generally at the synagogue, you will see down below the bimo, the platform in the center from which the rabbi conducts the service. Beyond that, there is the lectern from where the sermon is delivered. And then beyond that, there is the curtained ark. On the curtain, there is an inscription in Hebrew saying, I shall place the Lord before me at all times. Above the curtain on the wall, there is another inscription, again in Hebrew, of course, saying, Know before whom you stand. You will see a light hanging down from the roof. That is what we call the permanent lamp, which is lit at all times. Inside the ark, we have the scrolls of the sacred law, the Old Testament, the five books of Moses, which I shall explain later. I'm standing in the synagogue and I have put on the prayer shawl, which it is customary to wear during service, and I'm also holding in my hand what we call a kippah, which I'm putting on my head. That is a skull cap, a kippah, or yarmulke. The prayer shawl is something which is ordained in the five books of Moses. The kippah is not ordained, it is just part of a tradition. We are full of traditions. 
I can remember in the army being asked by somebody about a particular tradition. He'd gone to a Jewish wedding. He said all the traditions were explained except one. And the one which was not explained was after the ceremony when they had the meal. In the course of the meal they had chicken and people threw the chicken bones under the table. He wanted to know what the tradition was about throwing the chicken bones under the table. I said it was no tradition, it was just darn bad manners. You will see the curtain to the ark and again we have the Ten Commandments written on the central piece with the white background. I'm going to draw the curtain back so that you can see inside the ark. This is where we keep the Sefer Torah. The Sefer Torah is covered by a mantle as you will see. It has bells on the top, a pointer hanging down and a breastplate. The bells are to inform people that when the Torah is being carried it is coming because they might not see it if they were behind a large crowd. The bells are said to have originated 2,000 or more years ago being worn on the garment of the high priest and the mantle and the breastplate are to protect the uh, Sefer Torah. The five books of Moses are dealt with throughout the year, a section being read each Sabbath. I will show you a demonstration scroll shortly and you will see that the books are written on parchment and I'm told when in fact I weighed uh, the Sefer Torah proper and that turned out to be seven kilos. It takes about two years to write a Sefer Torah. I'm standing now on the bimmer, the platform, and you'll see this demonstration scroll, as I call it. This is a smaller version of the real thing, and it's on rollers, and it's unrolled each week so that a section is read each Sabbath. Beside it, I have here one of the bells, so that you can have a look at one of the bells, and I have here a pointer. The idea of the pointer is that the rabbi, when reading from the scroll, does not sully the scroll with his hand or his finger. The pointer is called a yod because it actually ends in a hand with a finger pointing. Then I have here a mantle which is used to cover the scroll proper. From the bimmer, the prayers are conducted and the prayer book is used. The prayer book in sections is quite familiar to non-Jews because it includes a lot of psalms. It certainly includes Psalm 23. And each Sabbath we say a prayer for the royal family when that is said in English. And it begins, He who giveth salvation to king and dominion unto princes, may he bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth. And it goes on to ask that the Lord shall bless the royal family and give wisdom to her counsellors and advisers. So there's a certain amount of English in the service each Saturday. Well, that concludes the tour of the synagogue. I hope you have got a picture of the general situation here. You'll notice, of course, that we don't go in for crosses or crucifixes. We believe that Jesus was a great man and a leader and a healer, but we don't believe that he was the Son of God. Of course, he would go into synagogues because he was Jewish and he would put on a prayer shawl and he would put on a kippah and the disciples were Jewish and the New Testament was written very much by Jews because, of course, Christianity stemmed from Judaism as the Muslim religion did. I hope I've given you some idea of our synagogue which sadly passes out of our hands on the 17th of November, 1998.